In this video, we're going to make a tooltip in Unity. It will automatically scale to fit whatever text you give it, and it will always stay on screen even as you mouse over the edges. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so I actually made a tooltip in a video previously, and that one still works great. However, in that one I was using a camera for the UI. In this one we're going to be using a screen space UI, so there's no camera. Also in that one I used the old Unity text, and in this one I'll be using TextMesh Pro. Also if you've seen the chat bubble video, then this should be very familiar since that element also involved resizing the background to match the text. Alright, so here's what we're going to build. Over here is my tooltip. And the first thing is that the background is dynamically sized to fit whatever text you give it. So right now it's matching perfectly. And right now the tooltip is constantly updating with a bunch of random characters. And you can see that no matter what text I give it, the background always matches perfectly. So I can set it to whatever text I want. It works with horizontal and also with vertical text. So making a tooltip with line breaks works perfectly. Since we're working with TextMesh Pro, it is very easy to add some colors and extra information to our tooltip. Another thing about this helmet is how it doesn't leave the screen, so as I mouse over the right side, yep, it always stays inside the screen. Same thing if I go upwards, yep, it's always visible. And since the whole thing works dynamically, I can also dynamically modify the font size and yep, everything updates perfectly. So decrease, increase, change the bone, change so on, and everything works perfect. So here it is, a very versatile, simple tooltip. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! Okay, so here I am in my empty scene. Let's begin by going into the canvas and let's create an empty game object. So let's call this the tooltip screen space UI. And now inside we're going to need two things, a background and some text. So let's add a new UI image for the background. And over here let's anchor it to the left side. So the way you also set the pivot is by holding down shift. So hold down shift and click down here. And yep, now it's anchored on the lower left corner. And just put the X and Y straight at zero. Okay. All right, so that's the background. Now the size itself will be set dynamically. So whatever we set here doesn't really matter. And then let's create the text. So a new UI, we're going to select text on text mesh pro, name it our text. And once again, anchor to the lower left corner. And in here, instead of putting it straight right there on the edge, let's give it a little bit of a breathing room. All right, so just like that. So I set the width and height both at zero. And then down here, set wrapping to disabled, overflow to overflow, then align to the left and lower corner. Okay, so here we have our basic tooltip setup. We have a background image and a simple text. Now let's make the script to handle it. So a new C sharp script, call this once again the same thing, tooltip screen space UI, drag the script to our parent and let's open it. Okay, so here, first things first, let's make a basic private void awake. Then awake, let's grab a reference to the background. So we're going to grab a rect transform. So we find the background and get the component, all right. Then for the text mesh, which again is using text mesh pro, so using TM pro, and then down here we can set of type text mesh pro u GUI. All right, there it is. So here we have both of our references. Now let's make a function to set our text. And here all we do is go into the text mesh pro in order to set the text and to our tooltip text. Okay, so just like this, we should be setting the text field. And up here on awake, let's do some testing. So set text and let's say something. Okay, let's test. And yep, there's our tooltip with the text. All right, so far so good. Now, after setting the text, we also need to dynamically size the background. So let's do that. The way we modify the background is access the background rect transform and modify the size delta. So this is a vector two. And in here, we need the text size. So for that, let's go up here to grab a vector two for the text size. And we go into our text mesh in order to get the rendered values. And let's include all of our characters. All right, so just like this, we have the text size. Now, this sometimes might cause some issues depending on when the text updates. 
So we can make sure that it always updates by going into the text mesh and call force mesh update. So just make sure that it works all the time. Okay, so we have the text size and just set it on the background pre symbol. All right, let's see. And yep, there's the text with the background with the exact size. All right, so far so good. Now let's do a more thorough test by setting some random text. All right, so I've made this simple test function. It creates a function periodic, which is a helper class from the utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. Essentially, this is going to trigger an action on every certain amount of time. So this action will be triggered every half a second. And in this action, first we are defining a sort of dictionary, then a base text message, and then we just apply some randomness, get a random number of characters, and choose a random character from this string. So this should let us test to make sure that our tooltip works with any text. Okay, so let's call this up here and let's test. And if there's a tooltip and regardless of what random text we set it, it always has the perfect size. And here we're automatically getting the rendered values from the text. So for example, if we modify the text size, so let's put it much smaller, let's say it at 20. And if there you go, now our tooltip is much smaller. So very easy, very adaptable. However, you can also see that the text doesn't look completely right. The thing is that the background is 100% perfect, so it matches perfectly with whatever text we give it. However, in order to make our text look a bit better, we gave it some breathing room on the left and lower corners. So it would be nice to add a little padding both on the left side and on the right side. So let's do that. Down here in our set text function, we get the text size. Let's also define a vector two for the padding size and just define some values. Now here we offset the actual text object by 4.4. 4. So let's essentially double that. So in here, let's put it at 8.8. 8. Again, this is just visual, so you can put whatever padding you want, including just zero. So we set the size delta to the text size plus our padding. Let's see. And if there's a tooltip and now it does look 100% perfect. So the background correctly matches whatever text we give it. And again, since we're grabbing the text size directly from the text mesh, it also works with new lines. So here in our string, let's just randomly add a bunch of new lines and let's see it. And yep, there it is. And you can see regardless of how many new lines and how many characters we add, yep, it always looks perfect. So the background perfectly matches whatever text we give it. Awesome. Okay, so with the background scale correct, now let's make sure that it follows the mouse. So here, let's make a private void update. And on our update, let's grab the rec transform from this parent game object. So let's grab the rec transform and we cache it here on awake. Just transform get component of the rec transform. And then down here, we take our rec transform and modify the anchored position. And let's put it at the input dot mouse position. So this is the current mouse position in pixel coordinates. Let's see. And right away we see some issue. Well, that's because the input mouse position has a origin on the lower left corner, whereas our transform has an origin right down the center. So let's quickly change that. So we select the parent game object and down here, instead of anchoring it on the center, anchor on the lower left corner. Okay, let's try. And yep, now it is following closer to it. However, it's not following perfectly. So as I move away, you can see the tooltip is actually getting further away. Now, the reason for that has to do with how the canvas is scaled. So here in the editor, we can see the setup and we can see that we have a canvas. And here in the inspector, we can see the various stats. So we have a canvas of type screen space overlay. Okay, so far so good. And then here we have the canvas scaler. This one is set to scale with the screen size and it has a reference resolution of 720p and it's set to match fully on the height. So what this means is that if we open up our game window, as I move the game window, as the height increases or decreases, it automatically scales all the objects. So you can see in here that the canvas does have a scale and there you go, it's not one, one, one. So as I make it smaller, yep, get smaller. As I make it bigger, it gets bigger. So this is why our tooltip isn't following it perfectly. We just need to use these values in order to make our calculations. So back in our tooltip, we're going to need a reference to the canvas rec transform. So let's add it as a serialized field. Okay, there it is. Now in the editor, here we can just drag the canvas straight onto it. Now you can also just dynamically find the canvas or use a serialized field, whatever, each way it works. And now here we go down to our update and we are setting the anchored position to the mouse position and then we divide it 
by the canvas rec transform and we're going to access the unlocal scale and now this one the scale is uniform so we can use any of these vector 3 values so just divide by the x all right so let's test and yep now the tooltip does indeed follow the mouse perfectly so right there you can see the mouse is always perfectly positioned all right awesome so our tooltip is looking great however there's one issue which is if i go into the edge of the window yep there you go now the tooltip is no longer visible so if you had a button right here in the corner this would not do so let's fix our code to make sure it always stays on screen so here on our update before we set the anchored position let's first validate it so let's first grab a vector 2 for our anchored position and we start off with this one and then we validate it and then we use it okay now here to validate it so we're going to make a simple if take our anchored position and let's first worry about the x so we take the anchored position x and then we add onto it the background rec transform we're going to add the width so the width of our background and if those two added are bigger than the canvas rec width if so then the tone tip has left the screen on the right side so if so let's push it back a bit to the left side all right so that will make sure that it doesn't leave on the right side and let's also fix the same thing on the top All right, so we do our validation and then we set it. Okay, so this should do it, let's test. Okay, there's our tooltip following the mouse. And if I mouse over the right side, yep, there you go, as soon as it gets there, it no longer goes away off screen. And the same thing if I go upwards, yep, there you go, it does not go away. All right, awesome. So now our tooltip is always visible no matter where the mouse is positioned. Okay, so we have our fully functioning tooltip. Now let's just add a couple more useful features. So first let's add a basic static instance. And then a function to show and hide. All right, pretty basic, just two static functions. So they're very nice and easy to use. And then the show tooltip and the hide tooltip, they simply set the game object to active or inactive and simply set the text. And by default up here, when we awake, instead of setting the text, let's simply hide it. Now let's make a quick testing script. All right, so just a basic testing script attached to an object and just calling the static function. So as you can see, this class is very easy to use. Let's see. And yep, there's the tooltip fully working. All right, now one more thing. Let's make it work with a delegate. All right, so I have this function which takes a system func. So this is a delegate which is going to return a string. Now, if you're not familiar with delegates, check the video link in the description. So it takes this delegate, which returns a string with our actual tooltip text. And then in here, we simply store it and we set the text based on the return value of that string. So it's stored here as a member variable and down here on our update, we're always doing set text and get the string. So what this does is it allows us to create dynamic tooltips. So back in our testing script, let's make a func to give it. All right, so here for testing, we create our func. This will return a string and then a timer variable. And on update, we're constantly increasing that timer. Then we tell it to show this tooltip. Let's see. Okay, so here's our dynamic tooltip. It has a static portion of text and then a dynamic timer that is constantly updating. So for example, this is really useful when you want to show a tooltip, for example, displaying some sort of skill cooldown. And since we're working with text mesh, then for example, adding colors is very simple. So we can just add the color tag so here it is, just adding some color tags. And yep, there's the fully working tooltip. And again, this is all very dynamic. So with the tooltip text selected, for example, let's make it in bold and yep, the size updates. Let's decrease the size. And yep, it's perfect, doesn't leave the screen. Let's put it much bigger and yep, there you go, it fully works. All right, so here is a really awesome, really robust tooltip element. It is smart enough to dynamically resize it based on whatever text you give it. So this is pretty much essentially for making any sort of game that is mouse heavy. All right, so here it is. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, 
posting a great time in the comments, and I'll see you next time.